Hi everyone, this is Linus, you're watching Gizma China, and this is a newcomer to the smartphone game, the affordable yet great Zook Z1. If you haven't heard of it, Zook is a startup which is backed by the Chinese electronics giant Lenovo. I've been using this phone for quite a while now, and let's see what we have here. The phone comes in a neat quality packaging and all the contents, which include a neatly folded USB Type-C charging cable, USB brick and instruction manuals are packed in separate boxes. When it comes to the design, the Zoog Z1 is not a small phone as it sports a 5.5 inches display. However, the bezels on top and bottom parts make this phone slightly taller than for example OnePlus 2. So the phone is manageable with one hand due to rounded corners and it sits very comfortably in the hand. I have both white and grey models and the differences are of course in colors which are different on all sides of the phone. A more significant difference is that the white model has a glossy plastic finish which attracts smudges and I'm not a huge fan of it. On the top we have a widely customizable LED light as you can choose any color you want and assign it to different scenarios. Also we have a generous 80 megapixel selfie snapper. On the bottom, there is a very tactile home button which doubles as a fingerprint scanner and it is blazing fast. Literally, it is one of the fastest fingerprint readers I've ever tested and it is super accurate. The setup process is very fast too. Unfortunately, it doesn't work straight from the standby mode. Next to the home button, we have two backlit capacitive keys and if you don't like them, you can always choose the on-screen ones and you can customize them the way you want. The backplate is made of matte plastic and it is nice to the touch. As far as optics, we have a 13 megapixel Sony camera which is also optically stabilized and it has a dual LED flash. The phone is surrounded by a metal frame and on the right there is a volume rocker and a power key, on the left we have a dual nano SIM tray, on the bottom there is a speaker grill and a mic and finally on the top there is a headset jack. Overall, the Zoog Z1 is a very well constructed device and I am completely satisfied with the build quality. The 5.5 inches 1080p display is very pleasing to look at. It is bright, crispy and sharp, it has great color reproduction and good viewing angles. Also, the visibility under direct sunlight is pretty good. When it comes to the UI, the Zoog Z1 runs on the well-known CyanogenMode Mode 12.1 which is built on top of Android 5.1. In short, the UI just flies through everything. But if you want a long story, let's begin. Basically, the Cyanogen mod has preserved the looks of the stock Android but it has a lot of neat little features and plenty of tweaks and customization options which are very useful and it gives a lot of freedom to the user. There are some familiar gesture controls but we only have those we actually use and they work as advertised. Also, you can assign different tasks to particular buttons, customize LED light, tweak the display density and so on. There are just so many tweaks and just to name a few, you can double click on the navigation bar to turn off the display or you can adjust the brightness without even going to the brightness settings. Overall, despite having lots of tweaks and customization options, the UI on the Zoog Z1 is super fast, fluid, responsive and to be honest, this is definitely one of the fastest UIs on any phone I've ever reviewed. When it comes to the processing power, the Zoog Z1 is no slouch either as it uses a quad-core Snapdragon 801 with 2.5GHz clock speeds, 3GB of RAM and whopping 64GB of internal storage as a base model. Some may say that Snapdragon 801 is already an old chip and yes, it has already shown its age due to the mainstream's transition to the 64-bit chips. However, everyone will agree that this is still a very powerful processor that can easily handle almost anything you throw at it. Asphalt 8 runs like a champ. There are no hiccups whatsoever and even the graphics look almost identical to any of the newest top-shelf processors. Finally, there were no overheating issues. When it comes to the multimedia consumption, the HD content looks nice on a brilliant and vibrant display and you are also getting a pretty good loudspeaker. Well, it could have a little bit more depth but still, the sound that is coming out is not bad at all considering the price category of this phone.
when it comes to the camera, we have a dedicated Cyanogen camera app which has a fast share speed, a nice clean design and it is very responsive. You have some settings to play with and you can adjust some basic stuff or customize the app for example with button assignments. Also there are some shooting modes and they can be easily changed by swiping anywhere on the screen. The 13 megapixels camera on the back is capable of producing some nice looking images with a good amount of details, decent color reproduction and contrast. The dynamic range is usually good but it is not always accurate, also you may get a softer focus on the corners of some images. When it comes to the night photos, they are not that impressive but not bad overall. The level of details is significantly lower and there is plenty of noise. Well, this is common to most of the phones in this price range anyway. As far as selfies go, the 8 megapixel snapper is pretty good and it will definitely do the trick for social media but if there is not enough lighting, you may sometimes get a blurry image. Hi everyone, this is Linus. This is the 1080p video test of the Lenovo Zook Z1. When it comes to the 1080p video recording, it is not bad but it is not great either. There is a decent amount of details but the footage looks shaky and it is a bit choppy despite the fact that the phone has the optical image stabilization. As far as connectivity, everything works just fine as I had no issues with the call quality, signal reception, Wi-Fi or GPS. The battery life is one of my favorite parts of the Zoox Z1. The phone has a 4100mAh battery with fast charging capabilities and it performs very well. I could get almost 7 hours of screen on time with a light use and the standby time was just brilliant. Naturally, the screen on time reduces if you do some more intensive tasks but still, I'm very happy with the overall battery performance. So there you have it, the Zoox Z1 by Lenovo. It is a great phone for a lot of reasons no matter if you look at it like at any other device or a phone that was built by a startup. It all starts with a plain yet good looking design and solid construction and a vibrant display. Also, you are getting a well implemented UI which is blazing fast. In addition, the processing power lets you enjoy even the most demanding games. 64 gigs of internal storage is more than enough to store some good looking images shot by the camera or store lots of songs that sound pretty good via a good sounding loudspeaker. Lastly, a generous battery will keep the lights on for a long time. However, if you are very serious about the night photography or a good video recording is a feature that you can't live without, the Zoox Z1 is not the best performer out there. All in all, despite a few shortcomings that can actually be fixed with future software updates, the Lenovo Zoox Z1 is a really good device for the price of just about $300 US. It was Linus, thanks for watching and if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to the Gizmo China's YouTube channel. Also I suggest you checking out gizmochina.com for a full written review and other Chinese phones news and reviews. Thanks for watching again and see you in the next one.